But also, to me, the team that has intrigued a lot of it is Arizona, and they've got the fourth and 27th pick. So, Baldy, what about the pairing of those two picks for the Cardinals? Well, I mean, they're in a good spot, you know, to build, you know, real building blocks to this organization, to this team. And, you know, I thought Monty Ossifort did a great job in the draft a year ago. But I think if you're sitting there at four and you don't move uh, down, like just take Marvin Harrison Jr. The fan base wants him. They're excited. Kyler Murray needs them. They need wide receivers. I think they're going to draft two wide receivers in this draft. But go get yourself a guy that stepped on the field in Columbus, Ohio, and dominated the Big Ten, dominated the Rose Bowl's freshman year. Then the next two years, he was the go-to guy. So go get Marvin Harrison. And then defensively, look, they need pass rushers. So how about Chop Robinson? Mm. It starts with the name, Chop. Give me a cross chop that can beat <laughs> tackles, that can get to the quarterback. Give me some chop in my defense right here. Jonathan Gannon left Philadelphia the year that they had 70 sacks and went to a Super Bowl. Let's start building the defensive front. Give me some chop right there with that 27th pick. You know, and if you want a successful blueprint, you follow the ball dinger model. And I'm going to go exactly with what you said, a wide receiver and a pass rusher. I just got two different guys just so we could fill some more B-roll here. On the show. Listen, that's what we do, Puma. I can't just sit here it's and read TV, it, right? It's TV. Uh, but I really like Malik Neighbors. I think that if the Cardinals move back a couple of picks or do anything like that and Malik Woo. Neighbors is available for you, you are not going to be disappointed with him. I know that Marvin Harrison is the big name. Everybody's been watching him since he was a freshman at Ohio State. But Malik Neighbors is a true game changer. He averaged over 100 receiving yards per game last season. He was second with 1,500 receiving yards last year for LSU. And he's a big reason why Jaden Daniels is the presumed number two uh -oh. pick uh, for the Washington Commanders. So I think you go out there and get him. Kyler Murray is going to be very happy. Uh, as far as defensively, I think that Jerzon Newton is a pretty interesting pick to me because any time that you can get pass rush from the middle of the field, I think that is such – an important aspect. Obviously, you want the edge guys to go out there and do their thing. But what we saw out of him was the ability to not only stop the run like we see right there, but he was very effective at getting to the quarterback, disrupting from the line of scrimmage, doing all those things you want to do to make quarterbacks uncomfortable. So I think either way, either, either one of those four guys, you're going to be all set. Johnny Newton is the elite defensive tackle in this draft. No offense to anybody else. He played last year with a Jones fracture in his foot. Played through it. Like, you're going to see the really explosive Johnny Newton in this draft. I agree. Like, this, you can push from the pocket. We see all these defensive tackles getting paid. Derrick Brown just got paid. We saw, you know, Jer Jeffrey Simmons and, you know, Quinton Williams. All these defensive tackles are getting paid. Teams value that defensive tackle push inside right now.